All right, so what's going on, y'all? We're moving into global XY stiffness matrices. So we gotta pretty much assemble it for this problem right here. It's just one beam, so it's not too hard, but these problems do get a little bit more complicated down the line, but you still need to know how to do these, obviously. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we have to evaluate the global XY stiffness matrix. So this is the formula for, uh, there's a, a lot of theory for the global XY stiffness matrix. There's a lot of theory involved uh, behind it, but I'm just here to do exercise problems, right? Um, it uses like transformation matrices and all that good stuff, but, and I could explain it, but I just maybe down the line I'll explain it, but right here I just wanna show you how to do these problems. So this is kind of given, um, I'm guessing if you're doing this problem, it's because your professor already covered it, all that good stuff. So you should be familiar with this. This is the global XY stiffness matrix with respect to the XY coordinate. And this is for like a whole system. In this case, we just have one bar, right? But you could have hundreds or thousands of these in real life. And then in exams, um, three or four, give or take. But um, we used to have, uh, what was the other ones? Uh, nodes one, nodes two, all that good stuff, right? Um, now we have U1, V1 and u2 v2 as our nodes so it's pretty much x and y components at node one x and y components at node two um let's see it was u2 and v2 so that really um these problems are pretty straightforward they're not even that hard but um i guess once you start uh doing a whole structure they could get pretty long um so this is what i like to do right um all right element because these things get complicated, but in this case, we just have one. So let me show you what I do. Because you're gonna need all these values, just FYI. So you have element, uh, we have one, right? This is your element, bar one. So we're gonna put one right here, uh, the theta of that element. So that's gonna be 45 degrees, okay? And then it's the cosine of that element. That's going to be radical 2 over 2, right? Uh, the sine of that element, which is also radical 2 over 2. Just take sine and cosine of this stuff right here. Um, you square them. So now cosine squared, that's just 1 half. Similarly for sine, sine squared 1 half. And finally, CS, cosine times sine. And in this case, it is also 1 half. And that's pretty much it. You'll need one more thing, right? E A over L. In this case, they give it to us right here. So E A over L, that's gonna equal 4.5 times 10 to the six, okay? Um, it's E A, which is 90, divided by 20. That's 4.5 times 10 to the six. And this is in pound per inch. Um, and it's a stiffness, right? Should be pound over inch. Um, so yeah, we could go ahead and uh, just plug and chug now. Um, it's K is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the six, right? Uh, EA over L. Then we have, I like to give myself some space because sometimes these things are, are a little complicated, but U2 and V2. So the first one is cosine squared. Cosine squared right here, we got it, it's just one half. That's why I do these. Technically, you could stop right here and do all these in your head or whatever, but I like to go the extra mile, C squared, S squared, and CS's. That's what our matrix is. So you just plug in now, um, it's one half for the first one. Next one is CS, so it's another one half. Uh, next one is negative C squared, so it's not <laughs> one half, okay? You don't square the C squared, you gotta be careful. So you just, if there's a negative here, you're gonna have a negative here. Um, just make sure you you make a note of that. And then negative one half, right? Negative CS. Next one is S squared, which is also one half. It's negative one half or negative CS. Negative S squared is negative one half. Uh, keep it going, right? Next one is C squared. That is one half CS, which is one half. And then finally, it is 
1 half for s squared. That's pretty much it. That's the answer right here. So this thing is symmetrical, so that's why I didn't do these areas right here. But obviously, you're going to have to write, um, unless your professor's cool with it, just putting symmetrical like I did here. But it's just this one. Look, uh, 1 half goes here. This negative 1 half goes here. And this negative 1 half goes here. And then same for this one, the one right next to it, right? Because it's where it starts. So it's negative one half. We got negative one half, right? What was that one? Then one half here. So the one right next to it is one half. And that's your answer right there. Um, I'm not sure if you ever see, but um, yeah, pretty straightforward.